production project. And um, I should tell everyone right away, this meeting is being recorded. Um, this is the second public scoping meeting. Uh, next slide, please. I wanna introduce you to the panel. My name is Matt O'Donnell. I'm the public information officer for Marin County. Um, next uh, speaking will be Ahmad Rahid. He's the regional project manager. Next will be Kelsey Kress. She's the project engineer. And Cody Erickson will speak last. He's the senior environmental scientist. Next slide, please. I'm gonna read the access to pre presentation and transcription. This meeting presentation will be posted on the project webpage. The link to this web, web page is included in the chat box. This me meeting is being transcribed. To turn on closed captions, click on the CC live transcript icon on the bottom of your screen and choose the enable option. Next page, please. We'll read the non-discrimination policy statement. Uh, the California Department of Transportation under Title VI of the Civil Rights Act of 1964 ensures no person in the United States shall, on the grounds of race, color, or national origin, be excluded from participation in, be denied the benefits of, or be subjected to discrimination under any program or activity receiving federal financial assistance. Caltrans will make every effort to ensure non-discrimination in all of its services, programs, and activities, whether they are federally funded or not, and that services and benefits are fairly distributed to all people, regardless of race, color, or national origin. In addition, Caltrans will facilitate meaningful participation in the transportation planning process in a non-discriminatory manner. Related federal statutes, remedies, and state law further those protections to include sex, disability, religion, sexual orientation, and age. For information or guidance on how to file a complaint or obtain more information regarding Title VI, please contact the Title VI Branch Manager at 916-324-8379 or visit the following webpage that's listed on your screen. We'll leave that up for a minute. People want to see that. And next page, please. Um, this page is in Spanish, so we'll leave this up for a couple minutes um, to make sure everybody can see that as well. I'm also told um, we want to mention that people who are on the phone. Um, can raise their hand by dialing nine. Uh, we'll, we'll get to um, more of that in a couple minutes. And then to mute and unmute, uh, you press six, I'm told. Hopefully everyone has read that and we can move on to the next slide, please. Yeah, the meeting purpose um, is to provide updates of the latest project development since the last scoping meeting in November of 2021 to introduce the revised project alternatives to initiate a second public scoping comment period and obtain community input and to provide and solicit information about the environmental resources that would be analyzed during the environmental process. The public scoping comment period is December 14th, 2022 through January 13th, 2023. Public comments will be accepted until 5 p.m. on January 13th, 2023. Next slide, please. Yeah, read the meeting protocol for everyone. Please hold comments and questions until the end of the presentation. Type questions in the chat box during the presentation or raise your hand to provide verbal comments during the questions and comments session. 
And as we said, um, you can raise your hand um, um, by dialing nine. There is a two minute time limit per verbal comment. Please be respectful of other community members, concerns and input. And next slide, please. And go over the meeting agenda. Uh, number one, um, we'll discuss the background, purpose, and need. Number two, we'll, we'll discuss the proposed project alternatives. Number three, we'll discuss the environmental process. Number four, the scoping considerations. Number five, the project schedule. Number six, review comment instructions. And number seven, questions and comments. And next slide, please. And yeah, from here, um, we're gonna turn everything over to Ahmad Rahid, and he's our regional project manager. Thank you, Matt. Good evening, everyone, and welcome to the second public scoping meeting for the SR37 flood reduction project. Uh, my name is Ahmad Rahid. I'm the acting regional project manager for 37 Corridor from Caltrans. I'll start with uh, the project background. Uh, we did our first scoping meeting in November of last year. And back then as the project alternative, we proposed to do the embankment for the entire uh, project limit. Caltrans received uh, 26 comments during the uh, scoping public review period for the first scoping meeting. And uh, one of the key themes of the comment was to build a causeway instead of an embankment. At the same time, a separate Caltrans planning study SR37 planning and environmental linkage study, which we are also calling the PEL study, identified the existing SR37 corridor for long-term development and a causeway as a solution to address projected sea level rise. Based on the comments received during the first scoping public review period and the SR37 PEL study, Caltrans has decided to revise the project, proposed project from an embankment to a causeway. Next slide, please. The visual on the left side shows the project vicinity. Uh, the project is located in Marin County. It, uh, the, par the purple line shows the project area. It starts at US 10137 intersection and goes all the way to Atherton Avenue 37 intersection to the east. Uh, the purpose of the project is to address recurring flooding issues that occur in low-lying areas on SR37 and also to accommodate projected 2130 sea level rise. The, the project limit is uh, really vulnerable due to flooding. Uh, highway flooding occurs during winter rain and high tide events, causing delays and closures. The roadway uh, within our project limit is also relatively low lying. Um, the elevation ranges from two feet to six feet. Next slide, please. This slide shows the color coded uh, elevation, uh, existing elevation within our uh, project limit and also the surrounding levees. Uh, the red line. The red line depicts the existing elevation range from four feet to six feet. The yellow line uh, depicts the range from 10 feet to 12 feet. And the green line is 18 to 20 feet and above. Just to clarify on the orientation, the project starts at US 101 and 37 intersection. At location one, we have the Novata Creek Bridge, which we are going to replace. And the project ends at Atherton Avenue under crossing at location two. As you can see, uh, the majority portion of our project limit lies from four to six feet, the existing elevation. And just to compare, the current 100-year FEMA-based flood elevation is 11 feet within our project limit. Next slide, please. Those of you who live in the North Bay remember that we had to shut down this portion of the 37 uh, twice within the last five years. The first time was back in 2017, we had to shut down for 28 days. 
And in this slide, we are showing some pictures from that event. Next slide, please. The second time we had to shut it down was back in 2019. And this time we had to shut it down for eight days. This slide shows some pictures from the 2019 flooding event. Next slide, please. In this slide, we are showing some side-by-side -side comparison of uh, what the revisions have been made since uh, the last time we did the scoping meeting. Uh, our first scoping meeting was held in November of 2021. Our project limit was from US 101 in Marin County to SR 121 in Sonoma County. And our proposed project was to raise SR 37 on an embankment replace Novato Creek Bridge and modify Simon Slough, Atherton Avenue Undercrossing and Petal Marifer Bridge. And our current project limit is from US 101 to Atherton Avenue Undercrossing in Marin County. And we are proposing to raise SR 37 on a causeway and replace Novato Creek Bridge. Next slide, please. And with that, I'm going to hand it over to Kelsey Chris, the project engineer who will go over the different alternatives. Thanks, Ahmed. Hi, my name is Kelsey Kress. I'm the project engineer with Caltrans and I'll be talking about the two alternatives. So the uh, environmental document would analyze each of these two alternatives, which are the build and no build alternatives. Next slide, please. This project proposes to accommodate projected 2130 sea level rise and recurring flooding on State Route 37 from Highway 101 to Atherton Avenue in Marin County. The build alternative would elevate two and a half miles of roadway on a causeway consisting of four lanes, a median, median barrier, inside and outside shoulders, and a bike pedestrian path as you can see in the graphic on the left. Next slide, please. The build alternative would be split into two phases. Phase one would be the first fundable package and would replace Nevada Creek Bridge with a causeway to projected 2130 sea level rise elevation. The graphic on the left shows uh, something like what this would look like. Next slide, please. As you can see in the photo, the Nevada Creek Bridge uh, phase one portion would be at a higher elevation than the existing ground. So transitional structures would be built at both ends to connect the existing ground to the new Nevada Creek Bridge. Next slide, please. Phase two would be to build the remaining portions of the causeway to accommodate the projected 2130 sea level rise elevation. Uh, the causeway would be built uh, the western portion from US 101 to the phase one portion that was built, the Nevada Creek Bridge, uh, and the eastern portion from that phase one Nevada Creek Bridge to uh, Atherton Avenue on the east side. Next slide, please. As you can see in the photo, the transitional structure that was built in phase one is no longer there and the causeway is complete at the same higher elevation as the Nevada Creek Bridge portion from phase one. Next slide, please. For the no build alternative, no improvements to State Route 37 would be made and this alternative would not address sea level rise and flooding. Next slide, please. 
Next, Cody will discuss the environmental process. Hi, good evening, everyone. Uh, thanks, Kelsey. Um, my name is Cody Erickson. I am the acting senior environmental scientist uh, on the State Route 37 corridor. Um, and yeah, so I'm going to be talking a little bit about the environmental process and schedule. Um, so with this being the scoping period, Caltrans is kicking off the preparation of the environmental document for this project. Uh, as was mentioned before, we've been in the scoping period for a bit uh, with the team kicking off the initial scoping period back in November 2021. And so based on the input received at the time and through the development of the Pell study uh, along State Route 37, uh, we've revised the project description and we wanted to initiate the second public scoping period to share these updates with you, the public. Um, as you can see from the graphic, it shows roughly where we are in the project development process. Um, and as you can see, it's still fairly early. Uh, so after the scoping period ends, uh, we'll then proceed on to further refining and studying the project alternatives, conducting the technical studies, um, and begin working on the draft environmental document. Next slide, please. Uh, so as I was saying, um, Caltrans will perform the environmental technical studies and prepare the environmental document for the project. Um, so what well, is an environmental document and what's its purpose? Um, so an environmental document uh, assesses and discloses the potential environmental impact of a proposed project. Um, it describes the alternatives being considered and evaluated under the project, uh, as well as those alternatives that were previously considered but now rejected. Um, and uh, most importantly, environmental document will also identify measures to avoid reduce and mitigate any potential environmental impacts as a result of the project. Next slide. So the environmental document that Caltrans will be preparing for this project uh, is known as an environmental impact report or EIR and an environmental assessment or EA. Uh, so an EIR is prepared under CEQA or the California Environmental Quality Act, uh, the state side of regulations. Uh, and it's the highest level of document under CEQA, uh, prepared when a project is um, anticipated to have significant impact on the environment. Um, an EA is prepared under NEPA, or the National Environmental Policy Act, or the federal side of regulations. Um, and uh, an EA is prepared uh, to determine whether or not federal action, in this case, this project, has the potential to cause significant, significant uh, environmental effects. And so Caltrans is the lead agency under both CEQA and NEPA. And so we will be preparing a joint environmental document, the EIR EA, um, and it will be circulated for public review uh, sometime probably next year, around, I mean, sometime around spring 2023, next year. Next slide, please. So within the environmental document, we will be evaluating the impacts that the project may have on several environmental resources uh, that Caltrans evaluates on all of its projects. Um, so these resources that will be evaluated as they relate to the human environment include the following listed on the screen. Um, that includes land use, the impacts the project may have on the community, um, impacts to environmental justice communities, visual resources, um, and others. Uh, and so if there's anything specific in the project area that you believe we should know about and consider, please let us know. Next slide, please. The resources that will be evaluated as they relate to the physical environment include uh, the following listed on the screen. Hydrology and water quality, um, potential impacts to noise or air quality, um, impacts to hazardous wastes. Um, Again, if there's anything in the project area we, you believe we should consider and look into, please let us know. Next slide, please. Finally, we have biological environment. Um, the photos here show some of the wildlife present in the project area that we know of. Um, and so we will be evaluating the impact the project may have on plant animal species, endangered species, wetlands, um, habitats, and, and more. 
uh, and throughout future phases of the development project development process, Caltrans will be working with the appropriate resource agencies to obtain any permits that may be needed. Next slide, please. So I just want to walk through the project uh, schedule briefly. Um, please note that these, these target dates are still tentative at this point. Um, but as we've been discussing, we're currently in the scoping phase uh, with that set to end on January 13, 2023. So that's the last day to submit comments. Um, after the scoping phase, we will proceed into the environmental phase where Caltrans will conduct technical studies uh, and begin preparing the draft environmental document with that set to circulate for public review sometime next year, spring 2023. Um, sorry about that. Uh, yeah, so after circulation, Caltrans will hold uh, another public comment period and host a public meeting uh, where there'll be another opportunity for the public to learn about the project and provide formal comments on the project and the draft environmental document. Um, tentatively scheduled for summer 2023. After the public meeting, we will work to address all comments and prepare a final environmental document and then aim to complete the environmental phase around fall 2023. Um, after that, we move into the design phase of the project and we hope to complete that phase uh, spring 2026. Um, and we hope to begin construction sometime summer 2027. Uh, again, these are tentative targets uh, and it, pending um, funding availability. Next slide, please. So um, we'd like to hear from you. Uh, please let us know if there's any other resources or issues we should study, or if there's anything else we should consider as we move through the project development process. Um, as a reminder, the 30-day scoping comment period ends on January 13, 2023, um, and comments must be submitted through either one of the following two ways. Uh, by emailing the project email listed on the screen, sr 37 floodproject at dot.ca.gov. Um, or alternatively, you could send uh, a letter in the mail uh, just to me with my uh, at the at the contact info listed on the screen. Next slide, please. Um, so here's a link to the project website. Um, or the, the Caltrans website, sorry, that has more information um, on this project as well as other projects along the Route 37. Um, so as you mentioned um, the, at the beginning of the presentation, a uh, recording of this presentation will be made available on the website uh, sometime in the next few days. Next slide, please. Um, and with that, yeah, thank you for your time. And I'm